Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students This is Professor Ravin Zugade from Department of Chemistry Rashtra Sangeet Kodoji Maharaj Nagpur University and we are discussing about the bsc semester 1 inorganic chemistry honors syllabus and in this we are in this particular module discussing about the chemical bonding this lecture has been prepared under the academic expertise of professor lj paliwal outline of this module is ionic bonding covalent bonding theories of covalent bonding metallic bonding and in the end we will discuss about weak chemical forces so in this lecture continuing with the theories of covalent bonding in previous lectures we have discussed about valence bond theory molecular orbital theory and vscpr theory now a few miscellaneous topics which are related with all these discussed theories we will be discussing in this particular lecture we will be discussing about certain aspects which are extensions of these theories the first concept which is actually an outcome of the valence bond approach or valence bond theory is the resonance concept we will discuss about this resonance concept now now in some molecules it is not possible to explain the all the properties of a molecule by a single structure now in that case we have to combine multiple structures so as to explain all the properties of the molecule and hence we can say that the actual structure is a combination of number of structures and these structures differ in arrangement of the electrons around various atoms all of these structures contribute to the actual structure of the molecule and these structures are called as resonating structures or canonical forms and this particular phenomena of existence of multiple structures of a single molecule is called as a resonance phenomena and the actual structure is considered as hybrid of all the contributing structures they are the resonating structures or the canonical forms every structure contributes to the final structure and the final structure is considered as a hybrid generally named as resonance hybrid of all the canonical forms or all the resonating structures consider a few examples the first example is suppose ozone molecule now ozone has a molecular formula o3 and it is actually a v shaped or bent molecule with this type of arrangement of three oxygen atoms now if we try to draw a structure of this molecule we can have multiple combinations one of them is say singly bonded oxygen atoms now if we consider this particular structure we will find that how many electrons are around each oxygen atom we will see that there are six electrons in the form of three lone pairs and one bond pair so overall eight electrons around this oxygen eight electrons around this oxygen but only six electrons around this oxygen atom so octet of the terminal oxygen atoms is completed but the the octet of the central oxygen atom is incomplete so this is unstable structure okay hence we can consider it as a different type of arrangement wherein you are having these two electrons also shared between these two atoms leading to formation of double bond between two oxygen atoms and a single bond between these two oxygen atoms now in that case we can see that there are 2 plus 2 plus 4 so eight electrons around this oxygen atom 2 plus 4 plus 2 that is eight electrons around this oxygen atom and also eight electrons around this oxygen atom so octets of all the three oxygen atoms are completed but this is not the actual structure because 
it involves two different bonds one o double bond o and o single bond o and we know that the bond length is a function of bond order more is the bond order less is the bond length so o double bond o bond length should be 120.7 picometer while o single bond o bond length is 148 picometer but actual ozone molecule has both the bond lengths equal and they are 127.2 picometer as obtained from the spectroscopic studies now how to explain this now this can be explained only if we consider this ozone molecule as a combination of two different structures wherein there is a delocalization of electrons where for some time this will exist as a double bond while for some time this will exist as a double bond and these two structures are the possible structures called as the resonating structures or canonical forms of o3 molecule and the actual structure is considered as the hybrid of these two structures where both the bonds get partial double bond character that can be denoted by a dotted line or a dotted curve between these three oxygen atoms now both the bonds are equivalent and their bond lengths will be between single bond and double bond because it's a partial double bond character bond and so the actual bond length can be very well explained if we consider this resonance hybrid as a actual structure of this ozone molecule let us come to one more uh, example of carbonate ion now again carbonate ion is a arrangement where carbon is a central atom and three oxygen are the bonded atoms so we can have a possible structure like this where carbon is bonded with all the three oxygen atoms with single bonds but in that case all the three oxygen which are terminal atoms or bonded atoms they have their octets completed but carbon is having only six electrons in the valence shell in order to complete its octet we can have again similar type of different structures where one of the oxygen atom is bonded to carbon by double bond but this is not a fixed double bond while this double bond is continuously uh, rotating between the three uh, possible arrangements and the double bond can be found between this co or this co or this co so these are the three resonating structures of carbonate ion and the actual structure can be considered as the resonance hybrid of the three which can be shown as this particular structure where all the three bonds get partial double bond character the c double bond o bond length is 120 picometer while c single bond o bond length is 143 picometer only Uh, whereas actual bond length which is obtained from the spectroscopic studies is found to be 129 picometer and our resonance hybrid structure can very well explain this bond length because it is intermediate between the double bond and single bond that is 129 picometer leading to partial double bond character of all the three co bonds and all of them are equivalent all the bond lengths are equal and 129 picometers only an organic molecule benzene can very well be explained on the basis of resonance concept now this benzene can be considered as an alternate arrangement of single and double bonds among the six carbon atoms which are linked in a chain manner or a ring fashion and each of them is associated with one hydrogen atom but if this is the structure then there are three double bonds and c double bond c bond length is 133 picometer while c single bond c bond length is 154 picometer it means that three bonds would have been shorter and three bonds would have been longer but it is actually observed that all the bond lengths are equal in benzene and actual bond lengths are 138.7 picometer which is in between the two meaning that all the bonds have partial double bond character there is no complete single bond or a complete double bond hence we can consider benzene 
as a resonating structure or resonance hybrid of two different resonating structure where you have double bond single bond arrangement but the double bonds are shifting between them so there is a delocalization of these double bonds or pi electrons this can be shown either by this particular manner or by this particular manner in both the cases we can say that there is a partial double bond character thereby the bond order is something around 1.5 and bond length is mean of the two or in between the two that is 138.7 picometers let us see what are the properties of resonance or what are the conditions when we write various resonating structures what are the necessary conditions to be fulfilled first thing is that all the contributing structures should have identical relative arrangement of the atoms the atoms should be placed identically with respect to each other secondly all the contributing structures should have equal number of unpaired electrons only their positions may be different in different structures but if one structure has one unpaired electron second structure should also have an unpaired electron thirdly all the canonical forms should have comparable energy then only they will contribute to the resonance hybrid if the canonical form has very high energy its contribution will be negligible so resonance can occur only when the atoms in a molecule are in the same plane or nearly in the same plane as we have seen in case of benzene it's a planar molecule so mostly the planar molecule similarly carbonate ion is also a planar ion so planar molecules will have a greater probability of showing resonance or resonating structures one more property of resonance is more stable structures contribute more to the resonance hybrid and less stable structure will have lesser contribution to the resonance hybrid and more is the number of covalent bonds in the canonical form more it, its stability it's quite obvious because when the bond is formed energy is released and when the energy is released stability is achieved so more number of bonds leading to more uh, extent of stability nextly the resonance hybrid is more stable than any of the contributing structure so whenever we are writing contributing structures they are associated with some energy similarly resonance hybrid is also associated with some energy the energy of resonance hybrid is always less than the energy of any contributing structure thereby the stability of hybrid is more as compared to any of the resonating structure or the canonical form the difference between the energy of most stable canonical form and the resonance hybrid is called as the resonance energy this amount of energy is released due to delocalization of electrons so whenever resonance take place the electrons undergo delocalization and due to delocalization of electron energy is released and this energy is called as resonance energy which acts as a driving force for the formation of resonance consider the example of benzene if benzene is considered as a combination of these two structures with three double bonds and three single bonds the single bonds are longer double bonds are shorter so we can have these two structures now these two structures have are associated with some energy suppose this is the value of energy on this energy axis then the resonance hybrid will have lower energy than this and the difference between these two energies will be called as resonance energy for benzene molecule the resonance energy is found to be 152 kJ per mole now this is the energy which is released due to resonance or due to delocalization of electrons and this acts as a driving force for the resonance phenomena now in previous lectures we have discussed about ionic bonding as well as covalent bonding now we will discuss about the covalent character of ionic compounds and ionic character of the covalent compounds what is the line of demarcation between them that we are going to discuss from here onwards so now let us discuss about what is covalent character in ionic compounds now whenever an ionic compound is formed it is formed by interaction of a cation and an anion the cation is smaller in size as compared to anion because cation is formed by loss of electron while the anion is formed by gain of electron now when the anion and cation they approach each other 
definitely the anion has a large electron crowd around it now this electron cloud is attracted by the cation while at the same time the nucleus of the anion is repelled by the cation so there are two interactions taking place the cation is influencing the electron cloud on the anion which is getting attracted at the same time the nucleus of the anion is getting repelled now if these two things are taking place simultaneously as a result the shape of the anion gets distorted and this distortion in the shape of anion caused by the cation is called as polarization this is actually a distortion phenomena now the extent of polarization will depend on various factors and if the extent of polarization increases the anion and cation virtually overlap over each other to some extent and this leads to a covalent character to the ionic bond whenever we are talking about purely ionic bonding or ionic compounds there is no overlapping at all there is only electrostatic force of attraction but when this force is to a great extent or increases to a very high extent it leads to polarization which further leads to covalent character to the ionic compound let us see diagrammatically how the process take place if you have a small cation and a large anion obviously anion is large in size because of excess of electrons around the nucleus and a nuclear force of attraction per electron is less here as a result the size of anion is larger the force of attraction exerted by this cation on the electron cloud of this anion will make it slightly what is called as polarized what is meant by polarization what is meant by polar and non polar species the polar species is the one where the center of the positive charge is different from the center of the negative charge let us try to understand the difference between a non polar and polar species if we assume this particular ion the center of positive charge is at the nucleus so also the center of the negative charge is also at the nucleus so it is totally non polar species even if it is ionic but when it undergoes distortion like this now the center of positive charge is here while the center of the negative charge has been shifted to somewhere over here and due to separation of the centers of the two charges we say that now it is a polar species and this phenomena is called as a polarization of the anion caused by the cation now what this cation is doing cation is attracting the negative electron cloud while at the same time it is repelling the positive nucleus of the anion because of this there is a distortion and this distortion leads to polarization of the anion caused by the cation now if the extent of polarization further increases it leads to partial overlapping of the two ions leading to partial or partly covalent character to the ionic compound and such compound will be called as a polar covalent type of compound this is called as polarization of ions now this polarization is associated with two important properties one is the polarizing power and second is the polarizability what is the polarizing power is the power of cation to polarize the anion that is called as polarizing power it means that polarizing power is a property of cation simultaneously anion has a tendency to undergo polarization itself that is called as polarizability so that is the ability of anion to undergo polarization that is called as a polarizability so polarizability is a property of anion while polarizing power is the property of cation and both of them are governed by certain factors which are given by fujian's rules we will discuss all the fujian's rules with some examples the first rule says that the cation with smaller size has higher charge density and thus it has higher polarizing power that is smaller is the size of cation higher is its polarizing power so force of attraction will be more if the size of the cation is smaller therefore 
if we consider the second a group the diapositive ions of the second a group like be2 positive mg2 positive ca2 positive sr2 positive all of them have equal charge but the size goes on increasing from beryllium to strontium and as the size of the cation goes on increasing the polarizing power goes on decreasing from be2 plus to sr2 positive second rule says that larger is the size of anion more is its polarizability smaller cation is better larger anion is better for polarization that is larger anion is more prone to deformation of the electron cloud and this is quite obvious because the grip of the nucleus on the electrons will be weaker in case of larger anions that is we can say that polarizability of the anion is directly proportional to size of the anion for example if we consider the halides the f negative ion will have minimum polarizability because of its smaller size while iodide ion will have highest polarizability due to its largest size thirdly higher is the positive charge on cation it has more polarizing power and also higher is the negative charge on the anion more will be its polarizability that is we can say that polarizing power as well as polarizability are directly proportional to charge on that particular ion that is polarizing power of cation is directly proportional to charge on cation and polarizability of anion is directly proportional to charge on anion so as the charge goes on increasing polarizing power and polarizability both of them go on increasing due to increase in the attractive forces fourth rule says that cation with pseudo inert gas configuration have higher polarizing power as compared to cations having inert gas configuration so normally the ions are having either pseudo inert gas or inert gas configurations pseudo inert gas configuration is 18 electron valence shell inert gas configuration is 8 electron valence shell 18 electron is ns2 np6 nd10 whereas 8 electrons is ns2 np6 configuration so if the cation is having pseudo inert gas configuration like this ns2 np6 nd10 then it will have stronger polarizing power or higher polarizing power according to fujian's rules so if we consider two examples agcl and nacl now silver is ag positive has 18 electrons in the valence shell while na positive has 8 electrons in the valence shell and so agcl shows stronger polarization because of the more polarizing power of ag positive which is having a pseudo inert gas configuration consider some examples and some applications of fujian's rules the very first application is we know that as the charge on the cation goes on increasing from nacl to mgcl2 to alcl3 the polarizing power goes on increasing and hence alcl3 has highest covalent character among the three because polarization will be maximum because of the higher positive charge on aluminum and because of increase in the covalent character the melting point goes on decreasing from nacl to mgcl2 to alcl3 hence the melting point goes on decreasing from nacl to alcl3 so we can say that the charge on the cation increases from na to al the covalent character definitely goes on increasing from nacl to alcl3 and so the melting point goes on decreasing from nacl to alcl3 this is an outcome of polarization of ion or introduction of covalent character in the ionic compounds second outcome of this fujian's rules is if the metal ion is same but the oxidation state is different then the molecule with higher oxidation state has got higher covalent character because of the stronger polarization or higher polarizing power of the ion for example if we consider snl2 which contains sn2 positive 
and SNCl4 which contains SN4 positive. Then we can see that SN2 positive is weakly polarizing whereas SN4 positive is having more polarizing power and as a result SNCl4 will have stronger polarization and because of stronger polarization this SNCl4 has more covalent character and hence lower melting point as compared to SNCl2. Similar is the case with PBCl2 and PBCl4 where PBCl4 will have more covalent character and so lower melting point. Similarly this is thallium chloride TLCl and TLCl3. Thallium exists in these two oxidation state plus 1 and plus 3. So TLCl and TLCl3 among them TLCl3 will have more covalent character and lower melting point because of the higher polarizing power of TL3 positive. So we can say that the charge on cation is SN4 positive more than SN2 positive similarly PB4 positive more than PB2 positive and TL3 positive more than TL positive whereas the covalent character also follows the same order more is the charge on cation more is the covalent character and melting point goes in a reverse order more is the covalent character less is the melting point and we know that covalent compounds are low melting compounds while ionic compounds are high melting compound or have higher melting points. Third important uh, aspect of this is the halides of alkali and alkaline earth metals are ionic. However, when we move down the group, the polarizing power decreases due to increased size. Hence, the ionic character increases down the group. Hence, we can say that LiCl has maximum covalent character while CsCl has minimum uh, covalent character and maximum ionic character. For example, if we can see this Li positive is the smallest ion while Cs positive is the largest ion among the alkali metals. When we consider the compounds with chloride, LiCl is having highest covalent character while CsCl is having minimum covalent or lowest covalent character among them. Fourth aspect is comparing the alkali and alkaline earth metal halides with those of the transition metal halides like AgCl, CuCl, AuCl etc. with NaCl, KCl. Definitely these are having pseudo inert gas configuration of the metal ion and as a result pseudo inert gas configuration leads to more degree of polarization and hence the covalent character is more in case of AgCl, CuCl, AuCl like transition metal uh, salts as compared to the alkali metal salts. This results in more covalent character of the transition metal halides decreasing their melting points. Now we have discussed the covalent character of the ionic compounds. Now we will discuss ionic character in the covalent compounds. Now if we have two atoms contributing their electrons and forming a covalent bond. The electron pair will be present or is expected to be present exactly at the center of the two atoms or at the center of the two nuclei. This will be the case if the force of attraction of both the nuclei are equal. Whether it is equal, low and equal or high and equal. In such case definitely the compound will be purely covalent in nature because the electron pair or bond pair of electrons will be exactly located with more density at the center of the two nuclei. For example, if we consider homonuclear diatomic molecules like H2 or Cl2, both the hydrogen atoms or both the chlorine atoms are pulling the electrons with equal force or both the nuclei are pulling the electrons with equal force and if the force of attraction is equal from both the ends, the electron pair will be exactly present at the center, no matter whether it is H2 molecule or Cl2 molecule. Since both the atoms are same, definitely the electron pair is expected to be present or to be located at the center of the two nuclei. But if the situation is slightly different, that one of the atom is having lower power and second atom is having higher power. 
we call this as electronegativity of the two atoms now if the electronegativities of the two atoms are different they will have different forces of attraction consider the formation of hcl molecule now both hydrogen and chlorine they contribute one electron each to form a covalent bond it is expected that since it is a covalent bond the electron pair or the shared pair of electrons should be present exactly at the center but among them chlorine is more electronegative and so it pulls the electron pair towards itself as a result the electron pair gets displaced towards chlorine atom permanently this permanent shifting of the electron pair towards chlorine atom will be leading to ionic character in this covalent compound as a result the chlorine atom gets <coughs> partial negative charge while hydrogen atom acquires partial positive charge leading to formation of a dipole this is a permanent shifting of the lone pair sorry the bond pair of electron towards one of the bonded atoms in other words we can say that the electron cloud is more localized on chlorine as compared to hydrogen if we consider electron pair as a charge cloud it will be a cloud more concentrated on chlorine as compared to hydrogen and hence chlorine will be partially negatively charged while hydrogen will be partially positively charged now if we have this is the representation of non polar to polar or from non polar covalent compound to ionic compound if the electronegativity difference between the two bonded atoms suppose x and y are the two bonded atom with the electronegativity difference as zero then the electron charge cloud is equally distributed over them and as a result it will be completely non polar covalent bond this is a situation where uh, both the atoms are identical or having almost equal electronegativity but if the electronegativity difference goes on increasing the polarity goes on increasing because of the shift in the electron cloud towards more electronegative atom and it leads to polar covalent character of the bond when the electronegativity difference becomes more than 1.7 the covalent character becomes less than 50% and ionic character becomes more than 50% and if the ionic character is more than 50% the bond will be called as ionic bond and not as a covalent bond so in such case we can call it as a ionic bond which is a polarized ionic bond while in this cases where the covalent character is more than 50% it will be called as a polar covalent bond the polarity of a bond is measured in terms of dipole moment this is a quantitative measure of the bond polarity or molecular polarity the product of magnitude of charge to each end of the molecule and the distance between the centers of their nuclei that is the bond length that is called as the dipole moment for example if we have a molecule like ab if there is a positive q charge on atom a and negative q charge on the atom b and if the distance between these two charges is l which is normally the bond length of the molecule in that case the dipole moment is given by mu is equal to q into l that is the charge multiplied by the separation between the charges now we have two cases if the charge is zero then the dipole moment will be zero or if there is no separation between the charges then the dipole moment will be zero so it means that if there is a single charge it does not lead to dipole moment it has to be a separation of the charges by a factor of l dipole moment is a vector quantity and therefore it is represented by an arrow and this arrow is pointing from positive to negative end of the molecule because the electron is getting shifted from positive to negative end of the molecule for example in case of hcl we can show this dipole as this delta positive on h delta negative on cl and arrow pointing from h to cl the unit of dipole moment is as we know that dipole moment is a product of charge into length 
तो चार्ज इज एक्सप्रेस्ड इन टर्म्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक यूनिट्स इन सीजीएस सिस्टम वाइल लेंथ इन सेंटीमीटर एंड सो द यूनिट ऑफ डायपोल मोमेंट इन सीजीएस सिस्टम विल बी ई एस यू सेंटीमीटर और अनदर यूनिट इज डी बाय एंड द रिलेशन बिटवीन देम इज वन डी बाय इज इक्वल टू टेन रेस टू पॉवर माइनस एटीन ई एस यू सेंटीमीटर इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक यूनिट सेंटीमीटर वाइल इन एस आई सिस्टम द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक चार्ज इज एक्सप्रेस इन टर्म्स ऑफ कुलम्स एंड द बॉन्ड लेंथ इन मीटर एंड हेंस द डायपोल मोमेंट इज एक्सप्रेस इन टर्म्स ऑफ कुलम मीटर और कैपिटल सी स्मॉल एम दिस शुड नॉट बी कंफ्यूज विद द सेंटीमीटर बिकॉज सेंटीमीटर इज स्मॉल सी स्मॉल एम दिस इज कुलम मीटर कैपिटल सी देन स्पेस एंड देन फॉलोड बाय मीटर वन डी बाय इज इक्वल टू 3.336 पॉइंट थ्री थ्री सिक्स इंटू टेन रेस टू पॉवर माइनस थर्टी कुलम मीटर दिस इज द रिलेशन बिटवीन द एस आई यूनिट एंड सीजीएस बॉन्ड मोमेंट इज अनादर आस्पेक्ट और अनादर कंसेप्ट नाउ ईच बॉन्ड हैज अ डेफिनेट डायपोल मोमेंट एंड हेंस इट मेक्स अ डेफिनेट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टू द ओवरऑल डायपोल मोमेंट ऑफ अ मॉलिक्यूल नाउ इफ इट इज अ मॉलिक्यूल इज only diatomic molecule then bond moment is same as the molecular dipole moment but if it is a polyatomic molecule then every bond has its own contribution to the total dipole moment of the molecule for example if we consider ch bond the bond moment is 0.4 cf bond since the electronegativity difference is more the bond moment increases so bond moment depends on the electronegativities and the sizes of the Uh, various atoms which are associated with each other so every bond has got its own bond moment and the bond moment will have its own contribution to the total dipole moment of the molecule and the total dipole moment of the molecule will be a vector sum or vector addition of all the bond moments in that molecule there is another concept of group moment when we consider the dipole moment of say benzene derivatives we find that we need to know the group moment rather than the bond moment and entire substituent group behaves as a single entity for example if you have nh2 group ch3 group hcl group oh group no2 group they have their own group moments so entire group behaves as a single unit and it has got some value of the group moment now we can see that there are positive and a negative signs over there the reason for this is the sign of the group moment shows the direction in which the group moments operate for example if it is a negative sign it means that group moment is acting towards the ring we are talking about the benzene substitution benzene substituted with nh2 means aniline benzene substituted with ch3 is toluene so if you have a substitution like this then the substitution leads to formation of some bond moments or group moments and they have positive or negative sign the negative sign indicating that the group moment is acting towards the ring and the positive sign implies that the uh, bond the group moment is acting away from the ring consider a few applications of dipole moment where we can use it what is the utility of dipole moment the very first application is we can calculate the percentage ionic character of a polar covalent bond we have seen that covalent bond can be a pure 100% covalent or it may be having some partial ionic character so we can calculate how much ionic character a molecule can have for example if a bond is 100% ionic then there is a complete shifting of electron pair towards one of the atom which is a electronegative atom and in that case the charge on one electron is 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so this is the charge that is a q value and the l value is equal to the bond length so bond length multiplied by the q value that is the charge on the electron will give the calculated dipole moment of the molecule while the ionic character will be calculated as observed dipole moment upon calculated dipole moment multiplied by the 100 the observed dipole moment is actually uh, experimentally determined dipole moment of the molecule 
calculated dipole moment is the dipole moment considering complete shifting of electron that is considering that there is a complete ionic or 100% ionic character we will take an example to see how the percentage ionic character can be calculated by using a dipole moment concept consider an example the bond length of hcl molecule is 1.27 angstrom and the observed dipole moment is 1.07 dBi. We have to find or calculate the percentage ionic character of this HCl bond. For this, if H and Cl are completely separated, then the if we compare the negative charge on chlorine and one complete positive charge on the hydrogen, then HCl molecule is expected as a dipole moment of 4.8 into 10 raised to power minus 10. This is the dipole moment. This is equal to the charge on one electron ESU electrostatic units multiplied by the bond length in centimeter is 1.27 angstrom. That is 1.27 into 10 raised to power minus 8 centimeter. That is equal to 6.09 into 10 raised to power minus 18 ESU centimeter that is equal to 6.09 dBi units. So this is calculated dipole moment mu. But the observed dipole moment is found to be just 1.07 dBi. Now it means that we can calculate the percentage ionic character as observed dipole moment which is 1.07 divided by calculated dipole moment 6.09 into 100 is equal to 17.7 indicating that the HCl molecule has 17.7 percent ionic character. Now this is because of the higher electronegativity of the chlorine which shifts the bonded electron pair permanently towards the chlorine atom and away from hydrogen atom. We can take a few more examples like this. Consider another example. The bond distance in LiH molecule is 1.595 angstrom and the observed dipole moment is 1.963 into 10 raised to power minus 29 coulomb meter. Calculate the percentage ionic character of this molecule. Now the charge on one electron is 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb and the bond length given is 1.595 angstrom. So converting both of them uh, into the SI units, we get 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19. That is Q into L is the bond length. In SI units, it will be in Coulomb meter 2.55 into 10 to the power minus 29. Now in this case, we are considering both of them in the SI units. So in Coulomb meters. Okay. Now we have percentage ionic character equal to the di observed dipole moment divided by calculated dipole moment into 100 which is 1.963 into 10 to minus 29 divided by 2.55 into 10 to power minus 29 into 100 coming out to be 76.82 percent. Now if we see this carefully it is more than 50 percent ionic character and hence we can say that this LiH molecule is a ionic molecule and it is having about 23% of remaining covalent character. This is because of the polarization of the ions. It means that if the percentage ionic character is more than 50%, we will call it as a polarized ionic bond. And if it is less than 50%, as in case of HCl we have recently seen, it is 17% ionic. It means that it will be called as a polar covalent type of bonding. Coming to the applications of the uh, dipole moment number two, we can use the dipole moment in the determination of shapes of the molecule. Now certain molecules can have more than one possible structures. So we can identify which structure is there. For example, if we consider the molecules like CO2 and CS2, now carbon is at the center and the two oxygen atoms are exactly opposite to each other. Now there are two bonds C double bond O and C double bond O. Now oxygen is more electronegative so 
the bond moment of this co bond will be in this particular direction while the vector bond moment of this will be exactly in the opposite direction and since the two bond moments cancel each other the vector addition comes out to be zero and net dipole moment of the molecule will be definitely zero same will be the case with cs2 molecule so if it is symmetrical linear molecule then definitely the bond moment will be will be cancelling each other and the total net dipole moment of the molecule will be zero but if it is a bent or v shaped molecule like h2o now in this case this is a bond moment of ho bond is towards oxygen atom due to higher electronegativity of oxygen and similarly this bond moment will also be in the direction of oxygen and hence there will be net dipole moment in this particular direction and as a result the molecule will have a permanent dipole moment which is 1.6 d by now if we observe these two things carefully we can identify if a molecule is a linear molecule or a bent molecule if it is linear molecule the dipole moment will come out to be zero and if it is a bent molecule the dipole moment will be non zero so we can identify whether the structure is a linear structure or a non linear structure similarly we can have a molecule like bf3 now there are three bf bonds and we know that fluorine is most electronegative atom so all the three bond moments will be directed away from boron but since the vector addition of the three bond moments will come out to be zero the net dipole moment of the molecule will be zero but in case of nh3 which is a pyramidal molecule the net bond moment or net dipole moment will be the vector addition of the three bond moments among them nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen atoms and hence there will be net dipole moment in the direction of nitrogen as a result there is a net dipole moment of 1.6 d by in nh3 molecule so we can identify whether a given molecule is a planar trigonal molecule or a trigonal pyramidal molecule third application of dipole moment is we can use the values of dipole moment to distinguish between the geometrical isomers we know that cis and trans isomerism is called as the geometrical isomerism consider an example of dichloroethene 1 2-dichloroethene in cis form and in trans form now in case of cis uh, conf uh, configuration we are having the two chlorine atoms on the same side of the double bond while in case of the trans the two chlorine atoms are on the opposite sides of the double bond and there is no free rotation about c double bond c since it is a double bonded molecule now since chlorine is more electronegative than carbon there is a bond moment in the direction of chlorine in case of this the resultant of both the bond moments will lead to a total dipole moment in this particular direction in which both the chlorine atoms are present and hence the cis form of this compound has a total net dipole moment of 1.9 d by it clearly indicates that cis isomer has a permanent dipole moment but when it comes to a trans molecule the two bond moments of ccl bonds cancel each other and the vector addition comes out to be zero and because of this equal force acting on both the sides leading to the net dipole moment of the molecule as equal to zero so we can identify on the basis of dipole moment values whether the given molecule is a cis configuration or a trans configuration or cis isomer or a trans isomer one more application is in the determination of substituents which are present on the benzene ring now if it is a di substituted benzene ring and the substituents are identical now benzene is a symmetrical molecule with net dipole moment equal to 0 now if two identical substituents are present on the para positions which are at 180 degrees their bond moments will cancel each other and net dipole moment of the molecule will be definitely zero but if 
these two substituents are not at para position but they are at ortho or meta position their bond moments mutually cannot cancel each other as a result there will be net dipole moment in this direction in case of ortho derivative and in this direction in case of a meta derivative the net dipole moment is the vector addition of the two bond moments suppose the two bond moments are mu1 and mu2 then the resultant dipole moment of the entire molecule is equal to under root of mu1 square plus mu2 square plus twice mu1 mu2 cos theta that gives you the uh, net dipole moment of the molecule now if we know what is the theta value so in case of ortho derivative it is theta value comes out to be equal to 60 meta substitution the theta value that is the angle between the two bond moments or the two bonds is equal to 120 putting those values and the values of mu1 and mu2 we can calculate the resultant dipole moment or vice versa if we know the resultant dipole moment we can calculate the angle theta thereby we can identify whether the given molecule is a para substituted ortho substituted or meta substituted or what we call it as a para di substituted ortho di substituted or meta di substituted benzene molecule this is all about in this lecture we will continue in lecture number 7 with various theories of covalent bonding thank you thank you very much